All right, just an uh, injury update. Uh, Crowder will be out today with the calf. Jordan Jenkins will be out today with the shoulder. Uh, Connor McGovern, uh, Perryman, and Marcus May will be limited uh, in practice today. Uh, returning to practice today will be Sam Ficken and Pirine. So we'll see how that goes. Um, without any questions. When do uh, you expect Mims to uh, practice this week? Um, I think we're good to go to today. We're good to go today because he started on Friday. Adam, with your with the kickers, uh, now that Ficken's back, what's your plan? Obviously, you have a new kicker. Um, can you maybe just talk about what went into that decision and how you will decide who kicks on Sunday? Yeah, we'll go through the week. We'll see where Sam is. Um, Health-wise, I think he's feeling a lot better than what he has in a long time. Um, you know, right now, I think the personnel guys, if there's somebody that they like, uh, they're looking to claim guys. I mean, we seem to seem to have a lot of moving parts going on right now as far as injuries are going. And, you know, guys getting put on IR to where we're able to bring guys in. It's not like we're, we're cutting anybody to, to claim someone. Um, so I think right now we're, you know, anybody that we're interested in, we're, we're looking at. Adam, what's the feeling on Crowder? Uh, today, I, I feel good about that. He'll be ready to start practicing Thursday. We're just trying to be smart with it. I mean, it's both calves. So, I mean, he made it through the game. That was, that was encouraging. Um, it didn't seem like it, it bothered him. He, if he was hurt and he didn't let anybody know. He did a good job of, you know, getting through that warm up and convincing us that he was going to make it through the game. So, Adam, as a an offensive guy yourself, what um what stands out to you about McVeigh? You know, his offense and what he's done through the years. I think you know he's done a good job of putting that group together, um, coming in there, getting the veterans he needed to get, you know, getting Robert Woods in there. Um, developing the quarterback quickly, you know, they had a lot of skill guys they put around him right away. Um, and then, you know, he's got a very, you know, smart group that can handle, you know, what they do, whether it's at the line of scrimmage and through the huddle, you know, their adjustments, the tempo they play with, um, you know, he, he was able to kind of put that thing together in short order. I mean, he had, he had some good pieces to start with really on defense. And then he was able to add, uh, the pieces he needed for the offense to kind of, you know, you know, finish the vision that he had for what that offense wanted to look like, look like. So he went and got the guys that he needed. The success that he and, and the Rams as a team had right away with Goff the first year, like he had struggled as a rookie and then he seemed to turn around real quickly. Did that kind of increase the expectations around the league for how quickly you could develop a quarterback? Like, do you feel that? Like, you know, it was mentioned with you and Sam. Nagy got it with in Chicago with Trubisky. Like, it seemed like people thought it was, that was going to happen everywhere after that. Yeah, I mean, it's – if it was that easy, you know, you, you'd see more people doing it. You know, I, I, I guess I look at it more of uh, – Mahomes probably got everybody's expectations a little higher than was realistic. Because what he does is, I mean, he, he makes it look so easy. Even when he throws a pick, it still, it still looks like good. Like you're like, ah, I can see why I threw that. Hey, Adam, uh, I'll acknowledge in advance is kind of a little bit of a weird question, but um, when you have your conversations with Chris after games, uh, I'm not asking in any way for content um, that's private, but uh, can you characterize what those are like um, each week? And, and uh, like, for example, after the Raiders game, did you get like a, you know, you know, what, what the F just, just happened? You know, what, what, what are those like? Can you just characterize that? Cause obviously none of the, they haven't been pleasant. I'm sure. Uh, I mean, anything he's ever said to me after a game, I mean, really it's, it's been more about, you know, our guys, how hard they're playing, you know, what, what do we need to do different to try to change the result? Do we need to get different guys out there? You know, he's 
you know, he, he's, he can, he can see it and look at, all right, Hey, are we playing hard or not? All right. Where are we making our miscues? Um, some of them are obvious to, to everybody of, all right, Hey, we lost that game because of this, you know, penalties, or we didn't finish the game situationally. Um, you know, we let a ball get over our head when we shouldn't, you know, whether, however you want to look at that call player, however, however you see that, you know, those things, you know, we have those discussions and, you know, really everything is, you know, he can see the effort the guys are playing with. It's just, we got to find a way to, to finish some of these games. Do you feel like that's enough for him? I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, obviously it's not enough, but I mean, this, this, yeah, this, is, a, this, is, a, this is a results. This is a results oriented business. Nobody, nobody cares about the process for the most part. I mean, coaches and players have to focus on the process and that's what we have to do. Uh, outside of that, most people, are just looking for the end result. I mean, he's a pretty even keeled dude, obviously, very level headed guy. Um, do, do you ever sense a level of frustrations in him or anger, you know, at what's been snowballing here? Yeah, that's hard for me to say. I think he's very, I haven't seen him, I've never seen anger. Um, I mean, he's like all of us, you know, he wants to win as much as we do. Adam, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think. I'm fairly certain that you have a very high degree of respect for Christopher. I mean, it seems to be, you know, like a, a real favorite person of a guy you've worked for. So in that sense, the way the season's gone, do you almost you feel, is there a part of you that feels like you let him down? Yeah. Yes. You know, I'm, you know, try to, try to figure out where things went wrong. What, what can we change? How, you know, I mean, you're trying to, it's, it's like, you're trying to evaluate things as you go and adjust to try to fix whatever the issue would be for that, you know, month or those three games or four games. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's about winning. We haven't done that. Um, you know, for him not to, to feel, you know, a playoff feel of, of being competitive, you know, in December is just, it's disappointing to me that we haven't been able to do that for him. Adam, do you ever, uh, maybe this borders on the personal, but do you ever feel compelled or have you articulated that to him? Yeah. He, I mean, he knows how I've, I've told him multiple times of, you know, he deserves better than especially, I mean, how he is with our players or staff coaches for, it doesn't matter anybody involved in this organization. I mean, I mean, I couldn't ask for, to work for a better guy. Just on a football note, um, Aaron Donald is, is going to be – I was uh, wondering when we were going to get to the number one defense in, in the National Football League. Yeah, well, I mean, he's pretty good from what I understand. So I read somewhere that he gets double teamed about 70% of the time or something like that. I mean, just – is that almost a prerequisite? You have to double team the guy because he's so disruptive? Next gen stats, Rich. Yeah, I love it. I mean, ESPN's working hard for you behind the scenes. I think. Well, you don't need stats to tell how good that guy is. I mean, True. anybody. True. Anybody yeah, it, it, it is. It, it, I mean, he gets double team block. It, it doesn't matter though. I mean, the guy is phenomenal at defeating blocks. Whether one or two guys are on him, whether he's backside, front side of the run, he's. I, I mean, if he's not the best player in the league. He's top three. I mean, he's so disruptive. I mean, you watch the San Francisco game alone. There's two plays back to back where it just it shows you how damaging this guy can be to the game. It's like force fumble. They score a touchdown off it. The next play, they're back on the field. He sacks the quarterback for 12 yards. Like it, it's just like this guy wrecks the game um, in so many different ways. Whether it's run game, pass game, creating turnovers just constant pressure on the quarterback to where he, he can, you can feel him so much. The ball starts coming out quicker than they're tight on coverage. The way their front plays, it, it, not only with him, but the rest of those guys, it allows the DBs to be really aggressive to where they don't have to back up. They're like, we'll just sit here because that ball's got to come out. And then let alone having probably the best corner in football out there as well. You know, I mean, Ramsey's looks like, like I remember him. With with Donald um, Adam, is there any player that throughout your tenure that you can 
compare him to with how disruptive he is on the defensive line? Uh, I don't, I mean, I mean, Mac, I mean, when playing him in 2018, I mean, he had that streak going when we played him, it was like the sixth or seventh game. And I think he had scored like four touchdowns or something crazy like that in the beginning of the season when he first got to Chicago. Um, I, I know when, when Sue was in Detroit, I mean, that, that was ridiculous what he could do a lot of the times. I mean, it, it, you couldn't hold on to the ball. He was getting through so fast. You know, I mean, it's just like – it's very few names you can think of that were just so, you know, game record, disruption, just throw your whole game plan and just they could trash it. And you have to have a plan of how do you handle this guy? How do we make sure we protect the quarterback? How do we keep, stay positive plays? I mean, it's it's a constant problematic issue you're, you're solving throughout the game. Do they look different under Staley, Adam, than they did with Wade there? Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't watch much of what they were, they were doing with Wade. I mean, no one playing Wade in the past, but I heard he had kind of changed some stuff. So it doesn't look like what I saw when. Like Wade was at other places, like when he was at Denver and stuff. But I mean, they could have been doing something similar to this last year. I don't, I don't know. Just one more for me on the the quarterback development thing. You know, there's no patience with fans. There's no patience with us in the media. In your mind, you know, what is an ample amount of time to give for a quarterback to develop in this league? It, it's it's. I think every situation is different. I think you you have to look big picture. You have to look at. Where are you at? Where are you at as an organization? Where are you at talent-wise? Um, you know, I mean, you have to you factor in all those things. I mean, it's a constant evaluation. What, what happens in practice and off season and around the building and game day? I mean, it's just so many pieces you got to put together, and it's not everybody sees it all. They they see a three hour snippet, sixteen games a year. So, you know. It's got, there's got to be a trusted evaluation within the building. Take a couple more for coach. Everybody good? Adam, I have one question. Um, it's when you, uh, the thought of, of winning a game, you know, uh, and breaking through. Uh, have you thought, you know, are you a guy that like uh, uh, visualizes stuff or whatever? A lot of athletes visualize or whatever. But I mean, have, have you thought ahead to, to what it might feel like if you could just kind of break this this schneid here and 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 the players get rewarded for what they've been putting in? You know? Yeah, I mean, I've been thinking that for a while. You know, you're on mute, Mark. Sorry. Um, I guess my question is, do you have a feel for what what it would feel like, you know, for yourself? for your players uh, if, if that were to take place, whether it's this week, next week, whatever. Yeah, I guess I'm not thinking – that's not how I'm wired to think of how is it going to feel type deal. I guess I'm just thinking how do we put a good enough game plan together, preparation, play well enough on Sunday to win a game. If, if I'm going to feel good for anybody, it's going to be for our players, for the, for the way they've gone about their business for every week since we've started, how they've handled – all the adversity they've been through, the constant, you know, roster movement that's occurred between the IR, guys moving in and out. And, you know, I'll feel good for our players more than anything because these guys have – they've tried to do everything right. You don't hear guys bitching and complaining. They're, they're constantly just trying to work and figure out ways to fix whatever issues we're having. I couldn't be more appreciative to the locker room the way that they've handled all this stuff because this – this could easily be, for me, just a nightmare to have to deal with if I'm putting out fires all the time, let alone try to win a game. And I don't have to worry about that because our locker room has done a great job as far as, you know, our leadership in there. These guys have just stayed the course and just kept fighting and trying to try to put the right stuff on tape. Yeah, that's what I'm at. That's what I was referring to was, is emotional uh, for your players. That's kind of where I was going. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's what, it, you know, players, coaches – you know, really the entire organization. But I, I, I just – watching those, watching our players day in and day out, I mean, they deserve it. You know, they've had it snatched away from them a couple times. Um, we just got to figure out a way to finish one.